schematic and wiring diagrams. And what we're going to do is show you how you can use a schematic diagram to wire up a device or to create a wiring diagram. So first off, we have here our basic start, stop, push button with a M coil, M contacts, and overload contacts here. What we're going to do is show how we can use this circuit to actually wire up an actual physical circuit. So here we have our power circuit. We have our three phase power coming in. We have our disconnect. We have the interlock. That's what the dotted line means. We have some fuses here. We have our M contacts, our motor contacts, and we have our overloads, our heaters down here, and our three phase motor. On this side, we have our control circuit. We have our push button stations. We have our M coil. We have our hold in contacts, and then we have our overload contacts. And we're going to use a schematic to physically wire up our control circuit and get this whole thing working properly. So the first thing I do whenever I'm working on these types of circuits is I just draw a quick schematic up. A schematic, remember, shows how a circuit works electrically, but not how it's physically wired, but it's still extremely useful. So what we have here is a stop button, start button, M coil, M contacts, overload contacts. Let's take a look at down here. We physically have an M coil right here, which is going to be this M coil in the schematic, our start push button, our stop push button in the schematic, our three phase overloads, three phase overloads, and then we have our actual power circuit here. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and number up this circuit. If you don't understand how the numbering system works, make sure you watch the video on numbering systems in motor control. So here we go, we're gonna start with one here. We've got one coming to this node, then we're gonna on the other side of that node go two. All these points are the same points electrically, so there's a two, two, and a two. Then on the we have a break, three, three, and a three, a four between the coil and the overloads, and then five from the overloads to the other side of the power. Then what we do is we take the numbers that we've assigned in our schematic and we place them into the circuit itself. So we have our stop, a one and a two, so we're gonna go one, two there. Our start, which is a two and a three, is our two and three there. Our M coil, which is three and four, is noticed as three and four here. Our holding contacts, or sealing contacts, or auxiliary contacts, two, three, two, three. Our three phase overload set, four, five, four, five. And then we have power, which we're grabbing from one and five. We're gonna use full voltage, which means we're gonna grab our power directly from the power circuit. And you notice that I'm taking power after the fuse here, but before the contacts, because we need this power to be in order to close these contacts. So we definitely need to be upstream of them and we need them to be downstream of the fuse in case there's some sort of uh, short circuit within this circuit that the fuse itself will blow. So what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to play connect the dots. So we're going to attach ones, to ones so I'm just going to quickly draw that in here so let's go from we're going to go one and go all the way down here to one then what we'll do is we'll go two to two so we've got a two at this node so we'll go up to that point there and now I'm also going to take a two over to here and take it up to that point there now one thing to note is that I don't ever want to attach this wire halfway through a wire here let me show you what I mean by that I don't want to take this two and go from that and draw it over to there. That would make no sense because physically you wouldn't do that out in the field. You're always trying to attach it at a nodal point. So either from that node or that node to attach to there. It doesn't matter which node you do because they're all going to be the same point electrically. Just pick one or the other. So we'll get rid of those. And we'll go ahead and we'll redraw our two to two. So we've got all of our twos attached here. We've got this point to this point to this point. So that takes care of our twos. Then what we'll do is I'll take our threes. So we'll take a three from this point and we'll take it over to there, point there. And then again, we have another three. So we're gonna take this three and we'll move it over to this three here. And that takes care of all of our threes. Next up, we have our four. So we're gonna go from this four and we'll jump over this wire and come along over to this four here. And last up, we have our number five. We have no other fives to attach to, so we'll take this and we'll go up, over, and attach to the line at that point there. So what we have here now 
is we basically have completed a wiring diagram and this is a great illustration as to why your schematic diagram is a whole lot easier to look at than your wiring diagram and it's easier to troubleshoot off that and it also shows in this video basically how easy it is to take a schematic diagram and go ahead and wire things up because these are physical wires so we can go ahead and this could be a wire that would go through to three go through to four now the way I've got it drawn is I'm coming out of the sides of these points on the push button but generally what you do is you come out of the bottom or the top so all these wires would come either out of the bottom or the top and away we go so what we've done now is we've taken a schematic diagram we numbered it we use those numbers to attach values to the numbers in our actual physical elements and then we use those numbers to play connect the dots and to actually physically go ahead and wire our circuit